Hey guys, Grumpy here with the Guide to Carriers. Today we're going to cover all the carriers, the different um, carrier abilities. We're going to talk about fighters, the different roles that they serve, and then why you should be incorporating fighters into about 95% of the fleets that you're running. Um, we're also going to go over ship mods and officer perks, and as well as character perks. So fighters, uh, what are they? So there are three types of fighters. Um, there are interceptor fighters, there are fighter fighters, and there are bomber fighters. Um, for simplicity's sake and for clarity's sake, I'm going to refer to fighter fighters as just that. Um, if I do say fighters, then I'm referring to this group as a whole. So here, let's look at the talent interceptor. Um, just like every other weapon system in the game, it has a data sheet. So it tells you the name, the little blurb, um, tells you primary role interceptor. Um, so the Interceptor's role is to fight other fighters. Um, basically, it is equipped with armaments that we'll talk about later. Um, and it has an AI that is specifically designed to target other fighters and blow them up efficiently. So moving down from there, we have Ordnance Points as an Ordnance Points of 2. What this means is that when you go ahead and equip your uh, Interceptor, if you look over here, 28. And then we equip the Talon. It brings it up to 30. Um, and then what they look like are these little tablet kind of looking things. Um, so these are the actual fighters themselves. You probably um, have seen these. Um, usually if you fight another car carrier, you'll get one or two in a battle. Um, so that's what those are. We go back to our fleet here. Um, so that's a fighter. Uh, if we go down from there, fighters and wing. Our maximum engagement range is going to be 4,000. All that means is this uh, fighter can move 4,000 meters away from the carrier before it has to turn around, refit, refuel, rearm. Next up, fighters and wing 4. Um, so we're going to talk about that a little later. But basically, fighters and wing um, are how many fighters are in this actual group. So here it says 4. There's also a visual indicator, 1, 2, 3, 4 talons. That's how you know there's four in this group. And then base replacement time, five seconds. So if a Talon gets blown up in combat, it's going to take five seconds for a new Talon to appear. Um, so after that, you have hull and armor. That's pretty um, self-explanatory. Top speed, 325. Okay. Um, next up, you see system there. In the case of the Talon Interceptor, it doesn't have a special system. But there are some fighters that do have special systems. Um, and then after that, you have armaments. So there it says Swarmer, SRM Launcher, and a Vulcan Cannon. If we press F1, you can actually cycle through the armaments of a, of a fighter. Um, here we have the Swarmer, and here we have the Vulcan Cannon. The way this works is that each individual fighter in a, a fighter um, group has one armament of that. So each one of these has one Vulcan Cannon and one uh, Swarmer SRM. So in this group of four, you have four Swarmers and four Vulcan Cannons. Um, and these um, ordinances look very familiar, right? Like we covered this in the Ballistic and the Missile Guide. These are the same exact ordinances. So if we look at the Vulcan Cannon, it has a range of 250, damage of 25, and a damage of 500. If we look at this Vulcan Cannon, 250, 25, 500. Uh, if we look at the Swarmer, 1,138. Uh, this Swarmer has 1,171. The reason is because of the damage of this Swarmer is times 2, whereas the damage of the traditional Swarmer is times 4. But they're the same Swarmer ordnance. Um, they both fire the Swarmer missile. Uh, they're the exact same in that way. Uh, if we look at the, the Wasp down here, uh, it has a PD laser, and it also has a Stinger class proximity mine. Um, so the laser does energy damage, like we covered in the energy guide. And then the Stinger class does fragmentation damage. So um, most fighters are do not have armor, and very, very, very few fighters have shields. So interceptors having high explosive fragmentation and energy damage do a phenomenal job at dealing damage to hull. Um, so they are very efficient killers um, when it comes to fighting other fighters. So that's why you want to use interceptors for that role. Um, they're really good at what they do, and they're specialized for that. Moving on to the next category, we have fighter fighters. So here we have the Xiphos, we have the Warthog, and then we also have the heavy intercept, the Thunder Heavy Interceptor. I don't know why this is called an interceptor. It is not an interceptor. 
Um, what fighters do are they prioritize enemy ships and they provide additional firepower to your fleet in the form of ballistic and energy weapons. So we're going to run through those very quickly. Uh, the Xiphos, it has a um, armament of a burst PD laser and an ion beam. If we press F1, we can see that. Um, we already broke down the stats of these in the energy guide, so you can refer to that. Um, but basically, these are the armaments that it carries. And then if you notice um, where it says hull mods underneath the armaments, it has advanced optics. That advanced optics refers to the same advanced optics that you can put on a ship. So it adds an additional 200 range, but reduces their turn rate by 30%. So the Xiphos has a burst PD laser range of 700 and an ion beam range of 1200. Um, so that's really good. So next up we have the Warthog. It has decoy flare launchers as a special ability. Um, if you shoot a missile at it, it'll just launch flares and then it'll be able to evade the missile. Um, its armaments are two light mortars. In my opinion, the Warthog is really, really, uh, it's a terrible fighter. Um, its OP cost is too high for what it does, and its ordinances are just really bad. Um, I do not recommend this this uh, fighter. Next up, we have the Thunder Heavy Interceptor. Um, its armaments are Iron Cannon, a Dual Light Machine Gun, and a Swarmer. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal suite of ordinances on this fighter. Um, I would recommend it. But unfortunately, it only has two fighters in the wing. Here you see the the two trident, the two thunders. Um, so they're really easy to shoot down, um, and they take a long time to repair. So the base replacement time is 15 seconds for these. They are very powerful, um, but they're just too easy to get rid of. So for that reason, um, I don't recommend them. Um, and then next up, we have the claw. The Claw is a phenomenal fighter group. First of all, you get five in a pack, so it's really resilient. Um, even if you shoot down two of these, it's still operating at 60% efficiency um, because you have three out of five. Next up, there you have the Iron Can Ordnance, so they, they impart a ton of EMP damage um, to a target very quickly. You can do something silly, like if you want to, you can run all Claws um, and then sit them on something like a capital ship. Um, and then it'll basically disable the capital ship. Um, it won't be able to move anywhere, it won't be able to do anything, it'll probably be flamed out. Um, at which point you can send in the rest of your fleet to go ahead and, and secure the kill. Um, next up you have the broadswords. The broadswords have two light machine guns apiece. Um, you get three in a pack and they only cost eight ordnance points. A phenomenal unit. Um, I typically run broadswords uh, as well as claws. Uh, the broadswords are great as triple nade shields. If you run multiple broadswords, um, like for example on the astral, you can run six broadswords each with three, so 18, and then times two light machine guns on each one. Uh, so you end up with 36 light machine guns. That is an insane amount of kinetic kinetic pressure. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a paragon; like your shields will pop if you have 36 broadsword or uh, 36 light machine guns firing at you constantly. Uh, so I definitely recommend the Broadsword. It's a really good fighter. Um, then you have the Gladius. Uh, its ordinance is really bad, and it also suffers from the same problem as the uh, the uh, the Thunder Heavy Interceptor in that it's just two in a pack, um, so it's really easy to shoot down. And then finally you have the Mining Pod Auxiliary. Um, it comes with a Mining Laser, which is probably the probably the second worst weapon in the game. Um, probably only second to the light mortar, but um, it does an insignificant amount of damage and it costs no ordnance points. I would recommend literally any other fighter over this, um, even at zero ordnance points. That still costs too much, um, in my opinion. If you wanted to make this worth anything, it should probably cost negative OP um, or just have like a better laser on it. To be honest, even like the IR pulse laser would be good for it. Uh, but that's basically the mining laser, or that's basically the mining pod auxiliary. Um, would not recommend it. Okay, so after that, let's get into bombers. So bombers are similar to fighters in that they provide additional firepower to your fleet, but they provide it in the form of missiles. Um, their missiles are functionally unlimited. So the way that bombers work is that they deliver their ordnance, then they have to turn around, 
come back to their carrier and then they rearm and then fly back out and they can deliver um, more missiles. So yeah, functionally unlimited missiles. That's the reason why their their OP cost, like relative to the other types of fighters, is pretty significant. Um, just because you do get unlimited missiles. If if all your ships have unlimited missiles, Star Sector would be a very, very, very different game. So here we have the Trident, the top dog. Um, there's a reason why it costs 25 ordnance points. It is probably hands down the best fighter in the game. Um, not including, you know, special fighters that are, are hard to, harder to acquire. Um, the Trident costs 25 OP for a reason. It has uh, two Atropos missiles and you get two in a pack. So you get four Atropos missiles um, that get to fire all the time. Similarly, the Dagger. Um, three in a pack, and each one has one Atropos missile. Um, after that, I would definitely recommend the Cobra. So the Cobra has cost 15. It has one Reaper. Um, I would recommend Cobras until you can get Daggers or Tridents and then upgrade to those two. Next up, you have Perdition Bombers. So Perdition Bombers have the Hammer, which is an okay ordinance. Um, it's unguided, just like the Reaper. But... Um, it does it does less damage than the Reaper. The Reaper does four thousand. The Hammer does fifteen hundred. Um, but you do get three of them, so you know it is resilient. Whereas with the Cobra, you can shoot down a Cobra. Uh, with the Perdition Bomber, even if you shoot down one, you can still get you know two hammers off. Next up, you have the Longbow. Um, again, strong recommendation for the Longbow. It has Sabo missiles built into it. It also has a burst PD laser laser for whatever that's worth. Um, so it does have some you know inbuilt point defense so it is uh somewhat immune to like missile spam um it can shoot down missiles on its own uh, but it does have sabos so something that i often do is i'll usually run like six sabos and an astral i'll run six longbows and astral and then i'll just issue like fighter strike uh orders all over the place and i'll demonstrate how to do that in a second um and basically what it'll do is it'll deliver sabos like all over the place and essentially um, cripple the enemy fleet or it'll remove the enemy fleet shields and on frigates it'll outright overload them on destroyers it'll pretty much get them near um, max flux and we saw how effective that was um, in the previous video it'll get them to near max flux um, it'll like severely hamper um, cruisers it won't really do much to capitals but if you sit all of your longbows on a single capital ship it'll probably overload it um, so it's a really good um, way to uh, tie up an enemy fleet um, while your fleet is moving its position and then finally you have the Kopesh um, and then also the piranhas I don't know why but I really undervalued these for a long time um, the piranha especially so what the Kopesh does is it fires annihilator rockets they do a okay amount of um, they do an okay amount of damage, of high explosive damage, but because you get so many um, rockets, it, it adds up very quickly. Um, I would recommend this against stationary targets. And then for Piranha Bombers, what they do is they basically unload, um, like, like if you look at the bottom, it has limited ammo of 10. It'll drop 10 of these standard bomb bays um, on a target, and each one does 400 damage, so it's really good against stationary targets and capitals. Um, because you're talking about like a reaper's worth of damage per piranha and you get three in a pack so imagine if you could strike uh, a capital ship with three reapers all at the same time um that's what the piranha does it's it's a very effective unit um i would recommend if you're gonna do something like that just roll with like six piranhas so like all six slots and ash will just be piranhas um, but yeah, so those are the three different types of groups. So interceptors, fight other fighters, fighters, uh, prioritize other ships and they provide support via, um, ballistic and energy damage. And then bombers provide support via, um, missiles. So, um, moving on from there, we're going to talk about the different types of carriers and their special abilities. So not every car carrier has a special ability that relates to um, carrier like operations. So here we have like the Condor. Its special ability is fast missile racks. That's irrelevant. Um, the Astral does have a special ability. It's called Recall Device. And we're going to go ahead and demonstrate that. 
So we go ahead and pick something like an eagle here. So here's the astral. Here's all its bombers uh, flying around it. Um, if I want my bombers to engage on their own, I have to press the Z key, the Z key. And that'll change its orders down here from regroup, which means stay near me, to engage, which means go find your own targets. And let's put our shield up. And then the way fighters work is if you ever select a fighter by itself and then you right click a target, it'll issue a fighter strike on that target. And that'll tell the carrier to send all of its fighters to that target. So all the fighters, they move out, um, the sabos lead the way, They, uh, the longbows lead the way with their sabos, so they go ahead and fire that, and then all the rest of the bombers, they go ahead and deploy their ordnance. And then as you notice, they have to turn around and actually return back to the astral in order to, uh, to rearm themselves. Like, if you look at the cobra, it's empty now. Um, if you look at the dagger, it's empty now. But what you can do with the Astral is you can do Recall Drive, which will teleport all of your bombers, no matter how far away they are, bring them back to the Astral, and then refit them immediately. So now the Cobra has a Reaper, the Dagger has a Tropos, the Tridents have um, a Tropos missiles themselves, the Perditions have hammers, and the Longbows have more uh, Sabos. So they'll go back in. So for that reason, it's really, really effective to pair the Astral with Bombers. Um, you can deliver a huge salvo of Ordnance, Recall, and then deliver another one very quickly. Uh, next up, the um, Drover and the Gemini, they both have what's called Reserve Deployment. So they allow you to produce one additional, um, one additional, additional fighter. So something I like to do is something with like Tridents. If I go ahead and run a simulation and I deploy you. So normally uh, you only get two tridents in a pack, but if I press F and activate reserve deployment, then I'll go ahead and produce additional tridents. So now I'm up to six. So instead of having two, four, eight Atropos missiles, I actually have 12, uh, which is really good. So let's go ahead and end the simulation there. Um, and then finally we have the Heron, his special ability, or their special ability is targeting feed. So what they do is they increase the damage per second of all your fighters. I recommend using interceptor fighters and fighter fighters in conjunction with this ability. Um, so something like uh, wasps, claws, broadswords, anything that have like, um, any, uh, anything besides bombers essentially, uh, you should pair with the Heron. You can use bombers. Um, but it's really hard to time targeting feed with your bombers delivering their ordnance. Um, it's, it's a headache, so I just recommend using uh, interceptor fighters and fighter fighters. Um, but that's it for special abilities that are relevant. Um, next up, we're just going to cover the rest of the fighters. So legions, condors, um, the Mark III, Colossus, the Mora are pretty typical. You have um, the Shepherd here, which has an inbuilt. Uh, fighter bay so similar to the tempest as well um, it has an inbuilt fighter bay that means it comes stock with the ship um, you can't change these um, they're just static in what they do so that's it for all the different types of carriers um, let's go ahead and cover the um, the hull mods and then the officer perks and then the character perks so the two hull mods that affect fighters are going to be expanded deck crew so what Expanded Deck Crew does is it uh, reduces the amount of fighters that you lose, uh, the amount of crew that you lose uh, due to fighter casualties, and then it also increases the rate at which it recovers by 20%. So something like the Wasp, which has a base replacement time of 5 seconds, it'll reduce it by 20%, so down to 4 seconds, uh, which is really good. And then Recovery sh Shuttles reduces the amount of casualties by 75%. So this is nice if you have a lot of like um, fighters. So if you have fighter fighters like broadswords or xiphos or things that get shot down really often, um, instead of accruing so many crew losses, you'll um, you recruit only uh, one fourth of them. So they're really good on herons, on um, moras, on legions especially. 
Um, that's what that is. And then there are other, the other mods that affect um, carriers are going to be converted fire bays. So if you notice, the uh, shepherd here has an inbuilt fighter bay. What converted fire bay does, fighter bay does is it converts the fighter bay that's inbuilt into additional cargo. So if we look at the cargo, it's 150, whereas uh, the cargo on a standard shepherd is just 100. Um, and then next up, you have converted hangar. So here's a mean build that I was working on. Uh, don't build this. It's not worth it. But you can add converted hangar, which will add a, a single fighter bay to your uh, ship. And then it'll allow you to pick the, um, the fighters that you want. But the trade-off is that it costs double the OP that it normally would. So whereas broadswords normally would cost 6 OP, this broadsword is going to cost 12. So, oh sorry, 8. Um, it'll cost an additional 50%. So whereas this broadsword costs 8 normally... Um, if you use converted fire, uh, fighter bay, converted hangar, it'll cost um, an additional 50%, so it'll cost 12. But basically what this does is if we run a simulation, um, um, it's still a work in progress, so don't judge it too much. It'll add broadswords to my sunder. Um, the broadswords will go ahead of me. They'll basically do kinetic damage to his shields. And then I can follow up with Sabos. And then my high intensity laser and my iron beam um, will do the rest of the damage to a ship. So it adds extra capabilities in another d dimension of ship building if you use something like converted hangers. Um, you can use converted hangers on everything ex I think except for frigates. Um, but yeah. So those are all the um, hull mods that affect carriers. Next up, we're going to talk about officer perks. So point defense affects piloted ships and fighters from piloted ships. Um, basically, um, what it means is your interceptors and your fighters, they will gain additional point defense range, which is really good. They'll also benefit from the elite version, which um, expands their point defense range e even further. Um, and then finally, oh, something I want to point out um, is that hull mods like um, advanced optics, uh, expanded missile racks, expanded magazines, these things, even if you put them on a carrier, will not affect your, um, your fighters. Um, these hull mods are for the ship. Unless they specifically say otherwise, they will not affect your, uh, your fighters there. And then finally, we're going to go over the character mods that affect uh, fighters. So we have point defense like we talked about. Um, most of the green line is going to affect either carriers or their fighters. So tactical drills, uh, coordinated maneuvers, wolfpack tactics, crew, tra crew training. Um, carrier group is going to increase your, fa your fighter replacement, which is really good. Um, fighter uplink is going to increase the amount of uh, top speed that your fighters have and then as well as their leading accuracy um, so leading accuracy is um, basically AI will compensate for a moving target if a target is moving from right to left um, something with bad target leading will shoot at the target um, where it is and something with really good targeting target leading will shoot where the uh, target should arrive so having very high target leading can be good in, in a lot of cases. Um, and then as well as flux regulation will also affect carriers. Um, and then that's pretty much it. So that's carriers in a nutshell. Um, why you should incorporate carriers into your groups, into your fleet composition. We'll talk about this in the fleet composition guide. But essentially they add another dimension um, to a fight so they add a numerical advantage to your to your fleet um, they add additional point defense they add additional weapon systems they add additional missiles unlimited missiles which is really powerful um, and a good carrier can definitely 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 help you take on larger fleets or win fights more decisively 
right? Like really good fighters can pressure, um, can pressure like a cruiser, take it out of battle, distract it for a long time, while you mop up the rest of the fleet. Um, a really good fight, a really good carrier can tank for you. In addition, like a legion with claws can tank a lot of things. First of all, the legion is a very tanky ship, um, especially the 14th battle group version. Um, and then the claws will basically sit on a target and disable it, right? So you can send this legion up against um, an, another conquest or like another legion or whatever. Take it out of the fight while you go ahead and fight the rest of the fleet. And then together you can move in on that other capital ship. Um, so that's why you really want to incorporate carriers into your fleets. And we'll go into uh, fleet composition later um, just in more detail. But other than that, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. I hope it was helpful. Um, grumpy out.